Oh, let me adjust this here. I will say, I say it every time, but you know how irritating it is to like have yourself perfectly in frame and then the second you hit go, it shifts the frame? Obnoxious, I tell you, absolutely obnoxious. I'm sitting here waiting, there it goes. I'm sitting here waiting. Oh, and I didn't turn my sound off and I forgot to turn ads on. It's okay, you guys don't need, you, you don't need no ads. It's all good. Um, hi, Sarah, let's see who all is here. And then we got some stuff to talk about. Um, if there's anything you all want to talk about, I'm all ears. Um, hello, Marie. Marie gets the award for being the first one in the chat tonight. And Lissa and Susan is here. And then we have Sarah and Kim is here. Hi, Kim, with her sunny sunflowers. I love that so much. Y'all, it's my last live stream in Florida. And first of all, shout out to all of y'all who are ready with my reminder to tell people this. So I'm going to tell people this now at the very beginning to kind of kill time and let YouTube do its thing and get it get the word out. Remind me to say it at the end as well. Um, but this, as titled, as you can see, is my last live stream in Florida, which means it's travel week next week and therefore there will be no live stream. Um, we will be in Illinois by Tuesday, fingers crossed. I would appreciate prayers. We start to travel on Sunday. We are driving to Tennessee. And then Monday, we are driving to Illinois. We're hanging out in Illinois for a couple of days. And then Friday, we will be driving home to Minnesota. So please keep Eric and I in your prayers as we travel throughout next week, because driving across country is always stressful. And um, you never know. So I appreciate any and all prayers and good vibes being sent my way. Uh, Julie's here and Kathy's here. Hello, friends. Hello. Sorry, I got like a hair in my eye. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. And I've been filming today. Trailer or very packed car? Both. We rented a trailer for the way back because we are bringing with us a whole bunch of stuff, like Eric's childhood stuff. Um, we got stuff for Christmas and everything, but like we've acquired stuff. We've been here since December 8th, December, January, February, March, almost four months. We have been here almost four months of time. Um, so we've just naturally acquired things over that period of time. But also my, like we went through the crazy beanie baby collection. We're taking home some of those. Um, we are taking home some, my husband's like childhood Legos and his Star Wars toys and a bunch of Florida Panther stuff that he's had down here forever. Like, so yes, we rented a trailer. And we're going to hope that, well, it, it'll all fit. It'll be fine. Um, we would have tried to make it work with the car, but we didn't think it would. So we just decided why not rent the trailer and just take that extra load of trying to cram everything into the car off of our plates. So we'll be doing that. But that, of course, adds an extra level of anxiety to the fact that we're driving on the road because we'll have a trailer behind us. So there's that. But we are excited to be heading back. We're excited to be um, hanging out in Illinois for a little while. And um, I know a little girl in Illinois who is very excited that we are passing through. Um, so yeah, it's going to be good. But all of that to say, there will be no live stream next week because I will be in Illinois hanging out with my family and making most of the time. So there is that. Um, does anybody have any highs and lows that they would like to share this week? I am all ears wanting to hear your celebrations and your struggles. If you have any, what is, let's see, I filmed today. I got some high, ro a Rosie reality. Hi, Rosie. I love it. Um, my high I filmed today. I got three videos done. Y'all, y'all. I'm really excited for two of these videos, two of these videos. And one of them actually was not planned. So I had a whole plan of one of the videos I was going to do. You know how March was supposed to be like my month of rest and rejuvenation. And I have told you I was going to do a follow up video on how I approached that month. And then it turned out that I had a month of not rest and relaxation at all, but actually some pretty high stress situations and a lot of crazy things. Um, so I had to figure out what to put in, in, uh, instead of that video. And it turns out I have this notebook where I write down just ideas, like videos, like each page is a video. And I'll like, if I'm doing the video, I'll write out the script outline and things like that. Um, but I'll write down ideas for just the future. And I happened to find the notebook. Finally, it was hiding in a drawer somewhere around here. And as I was flipping through it, I found a subject and I was like, brilliant, I'll make that video instead. So I made that video instead. Um, so it's good. I have a lot of videos coming out that involve me having to get home. 
Uh, we're going to do like a whole home reset thing for like the homemaking side of people and um, a big old grocery haul, like the restock of all restocks because I have to go get food. Um, so yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be a fun month next month. Mm. So that's a high. Um, my low, I don't know. I don't know what my low is. My low is not really a low, but um, things got more complicated with the business side of the business in that um, we had a conversation with um, a couple that are Eric's friends from college. One of them is a lawyer. One of them is an owner of a small business. And so we got on the phone with them to be like, hey, what does Brie need for all of her ducks to be in a row before she launches coaching? And basically I ended up with a to-do list that's about a mile long and involves opening accounts and moving accounts and getting numbers and getting approves, approvals and all these things. So my official thing, you have heard it here second. I think people who are active in the Diva and the Divine community, as in the website divanthedivinecommunity.com, are the people that heard it first. Um, but the official launch date for coaching, are you ready, is going to be Monday, May 3rd. That is going to be the official thing. I had to push it from April because there is some stuff that I just, I need to do like banging and all this thing, all these things that like I just need to be home for because I might have to go places. I might have to, I don't know what I'm going to have to do, but since my LLC is based in Minnesota and I'm pretty sure I have pieces of mail about it, I want to make sure I have all of my official documents for the business side of things and have everything squared away before we hit go. So I have to delay a couple more weeks, but that gives me a very clear date of start. And it also gives me, um, it gives me a month at home to get everything set. And boy, oh boy, do I mean everything. I have a very busy and very productive and very hopefully leaving me feeling inspired April ahead of me. Um, and I talk about that a bit in the goals video that I recorded today. And Lindsay, hey, how are you? Um, but it's like I had to do a whole goal setting refresh because y'all, it's April. I had to do a, a, a quarterly refresh of my goals. Like that blindsided me. I don't know why I didn't think of it. But like when I opened my I opened my power sheets to go do my April tending list so I could film it the other day. Like I I prep everything on Mondays and I film on Tuesdays, right? And it ended up being like a 90 minute, two hour project because I got blindsided by a goals refresh that I took really seriously. And I'm excited to tell you all about it in that video. But like, I'm pumped for April because now that I know that launch is in May, I have all of April to like get our nutrition and our meal planning and all of that on par and get my routines and my schedules revamped and ready to go. And oh, I'm just so excited. And then when May rolls around, y'all, I am so excited. I am still in like the, oh my God, this is actually happening. But I've been getting email inquiries about like, when are you starting coaching? I want to sign up, all these things. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this, this is happening. It's crazy. It's crazy. Anyway, enough rambling about that. Let me talk about what you guys are talking about. Let's see. Lisa popped on. Prayers for going up for safe travels. Thank you. Thank you online orders. Um, you just make it, make your life easier. Sure did. Are you staying at the same hotel you stopped at on the way down? No, we are staying at a different one because we thought being in downtown was going to be a little bit more complicated with the trailer. So we're staying a little bit, we're going a little bit past Chattanooga, um, which is great because that means the drive on Monday is going to be last time. So that's awesome. Um, I'm still not sure about the name, but I am trying it on for size. Well, you know my opinion of the name. I think A Rosie of Reality is an awesome name. I love that. But I am a sucker for alliteration, but I think it just go like you're it, it's so perfect. It's so perfect. Um, yes, Rosie, we are hauling a trailer of stuff back with us behind our SUV. Uh, make sure you check that Gracie gets past. <laughs> grandpa may want to keep her. No joke. I think grandma wants to keep her more than grandpa does. Like, I, I guarantee he's like, no, like she's talking about wanting to get another dog now because they saw how much fun it is to have a little dog and he does not want another dog. But he, so if you saw my reel today, he filmed that yesterday. 
he filmed it yesterday and I didn't realize he was going to do that. I did not tell him to do that. He on his own decided to record as he was coming home from work and that's what he comes home to every single day. Every day. My dog sits on his lap without like without even being invited. He sits down in the recliner. She jumps on there. No blanket necessary. No bribery necessary. She adores him. And so every day as he's, oh, there's a puppy. Oh, so cute. Every day it's the same thing. I'm like, man, the first day that he comes home from work and she is not there, he is going to be so sad. Even if he doesn't want to admit it, he's going to be so sad. <sighs> my highs. I got my first vaccine shot on Saturday. I'm credit card debt free and my parents going out of town this weekend and I am excited, but also ugh, because COVID is still a thing. All good things, except for the traveling, all good things. Um, that's amazing. And my lows, nothing major. I've just been struggling with my workouts and I feel, and I'm a little stressed about trying to figure out finances budgeting now that my debt has been paid off. Yeah. And like I said, there's, there are a lot of really good free resources out there. Um, the Dave Ramsey plan is also really great. You can look up like the Dave Ramsey steps. He's got some pretty solid insight, um, as well. Like his, his method's not flawless. We don't completely follow his plan. I don't think, but we're pretty darn close. We're pretty darn close to that. Uh, so worth looking into, but there's a bunch of, of really, so do you hear her? Something just fired her up and I couldn't even tell you what. Um, there's, there's a lot of good budgeting ideas out there. If any of you have suggestions for like different programs or whatever that Lissa should look into or people or resources for basic budgeting, let us know. A few highs, down four pounds this week, and the weather is changing. We got up to 16, 60-ish. Low is dealing with end of the semester stress. Three weeks to go. Go, Rosie, go. You've got this. Wow, Lissa, way to go. Somebody asked me how I was feeling at work today because things are a bit stressful in NYC, and my <laughs> reply was, well, I'm still on this side of the dirt. That's that's a solid reply. Um, my dad used to have in his email signature, every day above ground is a good day. So yeah, yeah. Uh, my dad is also getting the, uh, my mom just told me like two minutes before the live stream start that my dad got his appointment for his vaccine. So I'm literally going to be the only one in my family that hasn't been vaccinated yet. Come on. It's so irritating. I'm thrilled. I'm so happy for them, but I'm like, this just, not fair. Not fair. Oh, man. Um, I think it's a great name, Rosie. I do like alliteration, and I do believe in the importance of having a realistic but positive outlook. I love it. I love it, Rosie. I love everything about it. Uh, Lissa, check the 50-30-20 plan, too. The Budget Mom has some good info, too. Has free worksheets. Oh, yeah, I've heard of the Budget Mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Budget Mom... Um, I don't know if, oh, who else? I follow somebody. I don't really watch any of her videos, but I follow somebody who had some budgeting stuff and I can't remember who it was. Um, but yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Susan wanted me to talk about my experience with lentils. I know this is really random for people who are like, what? Um, but in my grocery haul that I shared this week, and this was a grocery haul from a couple of weeks ago. Um, see, I'm getting very good at like backdating my content. So like, vlogs are over a week out and like grocery hauls are from a couple weeks ago. So I have everything planned in advance. I'm getting there. I'm trying real hard guys. I'm trying real hard. Um, when are you eligible in Minnesota for your vaccine? Well, see, that's a very, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. I think didn't president Biden put out there, um, like everybody the, with the new, um, when he got more vaccines, didn't he put out there that like either, either April 1st or May 1st, all adults should be eligible for the vaccine. He, he put out something that said he's, that's basically saying he's trying to expedite the whole process, which is amazing. Um, but I think there's a goal of having all adults eligible by it's either April 1st or May 1st. And I can't remember which one, but then there's the whole, like, I really would love to get in contact with my doctor and figure out how I can play the dis the disease card. I have a disease that could, my disease could affect my diaphragm, which is a breathing thing. And I also have um, asthma. 
Like I have two things that should warrant me getting a shot early. Um, I just don't know how to to prove it because in Minnesota there's a very specific list of uh, comorbidities that are going to count. And muscular dystrophy is technically not on it and Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease is technically not on it. Um, for those of you keeping track, Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease is not in fact a form of muscular dystrophy because it is a nerve disease. However, the Muscular Dystrophy Association takes care of people with CMT. And it's actually one of the diseases with the most people that they take care of currently. Or it is the it is the largest disease that they're currently taking care of. So my thought is, if they start to say muscular dystrophy is acceptable, it will be real easy for me to slip in there because literally the Muscular Dystrophy Association is taking care of us. So there's that. I hope that answers your question. <sighs> da, 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 da. It's so freeing to get the vaccine. You have an underlying condition, you should qualify for the vaccine. I sure hope so. The second I get home, I'm gonna start hunting. That is like, that's part of April. One of my April goals should have been to get a freaking vaccine appointment. Missed opportunity there, <laughs> totally forgot. But that is one of my goals. I should write that down as a goal. Um, so while I'm cleaning and resetting and filming and doing all the business things, I'm also going to be stalking Minnesota COVID vaccine websites. I know we are not there yet. I have a cue for the Q&A session. I love when I get cues for the Q&A session. So ask away, my friends. Since watching your podcast video, I have been listening to Biceps After Babies, wondering what you thought of Macros 101. Okay, great question. Um, and then let's see, YouTuber I watched volunteered at a clinic for a shift and then was able to get the vaccine afterwards. Maybe look into that. She just did clerical stuff. That's a good idea. Um, May 1st, Biden said all adults, but I'm sure you qualify. Asthma as a qualifier, just make your appointment. Yeah, I'm going to just do my best to make my appointment and maybe like message my doctor on the portal and be like, hey, can I get like a doctor's note that says I'm allowed to get the vaccine right now? I don't know. I can't decide what I'm going to do. I mean, a few boxes you could check off if they don't ask too many questions. Yeah, that's fair. In Wisconsin, my brother-in-law has asthma and is eligible on Monday. Ooh, interesting. Wisconsin's not that far away from Minnesota. That's interesting. Good. Ask your questions. Keep the questions rolling in. I'm going to hop back up to Susan's question and talk about lentils. Keep all your comments and your questions rolling away and I will get to them when I get to them. Um, how did I like lentils? They're pretty good. They have, they, they reminded me, and someone commented, it might have been you, Susan, um, that if you like beans, you'll like lentils. And that is very, that's a very accurate description of like kind of the, the texture of a lentil is like the texture of a bean in that it's kind of like a dry pasty texture. Um, but I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. I've tried them a couple of ways, none of which are like profoundly interesting. I literally as meal prep one day just boiled a whole bunch of lentils so they were pre-cooked and then I put them in the fridge for me to be able to use later because I wasn't going to force lentils on anybody else so I just kind of had my own container of lentils and when I thought about it I used lentils so one way I use them is I put them on a salad and that worked out great I was I was here for putting them on a salad cold it was awesome um, another way I ate them is just I literally put a like heated them up and put a little bit of butter on them instead of oil just a little bit of butter to give them a buttery taste and then seasoned them with onion salt delicious pretty good I haven't gotten creative yet but um, Sarah has actually been sending me recipes and stuff which is amazing so I'm excited to look into that a little bit further um, and maybe even introduce my husband to them because he is apparently very interested in trying new foods I roasted kale tonight like made kale chips just for my own side dish we had some kale that I needed to finish up and I made everybody else um, just steamed vegetables and I did I couldn't eat all of them because it was literally uh, like my whole plate was kale with my chicken and sweet potatoes and um but I heard him walk by and he goes what's on this tray kale and I go yeah it's roasted kale and he picked some up and he ate it and he goes hey this is pretty good and yesterday when I made dinner I threw kale in mine too and he was like why didn't you put kale in mine? I'm like, you don't like kale. And he goes, yeah, but I'm willing to try it. I need vegetables. And so I'm like, maybe he's, st he's starting to be open to the idea of 
more vegetables and a little bit more creativity in terms of meal composition for the sake of nutritional value, uh, which is very exciting. So I'm thinking I might be able to convince him to do lentils too, put lentils in soup. Yeah, that's what I've heard. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess around with it. But for the 99 cents, y'all, the bag was 99 cents. And there was like 13 servings of high protein, high fiber, like amazing. I was floored when I actually read the nutrition information. So the long and the short of it, Susan, are they my favorite flavor and texture? No, but I'm excited to learn how to use them and incorporate them into my routine regularly because they are so nutritionally sound. I'm blown away and they're not hard either. Like they're not hard to, to deal with. Like making them was basically like making rice. So awesome. And um, also I noticed not at the Target that's here, so I haven't been able to try it, but it, hopefully at my Target back home because it's super Target. You know how they have like those microwave bags of rice for a minute? They have lentil ones too. So I can buy a couple bags of pre-done lentils and make them real easy. I love it. Um, aren't green and brown ones more meaty than the red ones? I haven't the slightest idea. I know nothing about lentils. I know that Target only had, this Target only had green dried lentils in, and I don't even know if they classified them as green lentils. It might've just said lentils. It was the 99 cent bag of lentils by Good and Gather. That's all they had. So that's what I purchased and that's what I'm trying. Um, and my experience has not been negative. So we will see, we will see. Red lentils pretty much dissolve, yours are green. Interesting, interesting, okay. So that is my little bit on lentils. Do, 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 do. Where was the other question? What were your thoughts on Macros 101? I think that Macros 101 was incredibly informative and gave me the base that I needed to help understand macros a little bit better. Um, a couple other options would be to hire a macro coach to work with you personally. I wasn't quite ready for that commitment yet. Um, but I, I'm not ruling it out in the future simply because even though like he loved this, even though I am I like, I'm a coach, I'm going to become a coach and I'm going to have clients. It, I also feel like I would benefit from having a coach as well because accountability, your girl likes accountability and somebody to answer to. Um, and I firmly believe that one of the reasons I was so successful when I was on Weight Watchers Points Plus is because I went to meetings and had to weigh in in front of the same person every week. Um, because accountability, right? Accountability. So I'm considering doing a coach in the future once I've got some extra disposable income to spare. But Macros 101, even though it was a couple hundred dollars, it was a very solid base for learning how to do it myself. She gives you the formulas to help you figure things out yourself. And that is more of a, that's a teach a man to fish or give a man a fish, right? If you have the coach, you want, you hope that they teach you how to fish, but they're going to set your numbers for you. And for me, it's really beneficial to be able to go back and work things out myself. Um, and, and I love that. And I love the education that came with it because even though I, I've learned about nutrition and I know about macronutrients and I, especially about protein, um, I never really took the time to understand in detail what the, um, ins and outs of specific macro tracking were and why. And this course covers all of that. It teaches you how to track things like alcohol. It teaches you how to have your backup plan. And like, it was really great. It was really great. If you have the income to spare and it's something that you are considering, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's a waste of money. Not at all. It was very educational. <sighs> Sorry, I'm going to keep drinking a lot. My throat is tired and I didn't know that until I started talking. Oh man, y'all. Oh man. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see. Every now and then there's a part of me that wants to make goal haul videos on YouTube, but I also refuse to put my face on YouTube and I have no idea how to edit. So I doubt anyone would watch. Rosie, somebody would watch. First of all, I'm sure people in our community would watch, um, but you got to be willing to put yourself out there. If you're not willing to put yourself out there, there's no need to start a YouTube channel. Uh, because people suck. Like, that's the truth of it. There's a lot of good people. I mean, look, there's 
well, I was going to say there's 23 of you hanging out with me right now, but we know that a couple of these people are actually not the fun members of the community, but the people that like to hit the thumbs down button and then probably sit at home and try and watch for some reason to make fun of me, which is fine. And that is literally the point, right? Um, but most of you here are here because you are supportive, wonderful individuals and members of the Diva and the Divine community, and I love you. Um, so that being said, um, you still got to be willing to put yourself out there and mess around with uh, and deal with, mess around with, choose to openly ignore the haters. Um, but it's a great thing. It is a really great thing, especially if you find something that you'd like to share, you know? Um, my son, age 33, has Crohn's, which has been under control. He used that card to get the vaccine. He has a baby on the way in May. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Here in New Jersey, the fact that you're considered overweight and the asthma would get you in. And then there's your disability thing. And technically, you are a transplant recipient. That's true. Do they... Sp Is your cornea considered an organ? Is your cornea an organ? I don't actually know. It's literally pulled... Unlike many organ transplants, cornea transplants about 99 success rate. That didn't answer the question. Is a cornea considered an organ transplant? It is. Lissa, I didn't even think about that. I'm an organ transplant recipient. Oh. Brilliant. Brilliant. I did. Oh. Oh. Of all the things. Oh my gosh. Uh, look for green lentil pasta, delish, full of fiber and protein. I will have to. Now that I've had lentils and they're not so scary, I'm not afraid of lentil pasta. Like, not that I was ever afraid of it. I'm always willing to try something, but like, I've tried the chickpea pasta and it's fine. It's good. It's solid. It's not like regular pasta, but it's not awful. My husband can tell the difference. I can't really tell the difference, but, um, it's good, but now I will look into, like, the things that talk about lentils. I will definitely be paying more attention. I think the second one I sent you appeared because of the first one I sent you. Darn Google knowing all about me. Put lentils in soup. I have a friend who used to mix them into her ground beef to stretch it out. But my favorite recipes are leftover lentil bowls and the butternut squash feta apple salad. Yeah, I'll have to look into all that stuff. That all sounds so good. Oh, no, I lost it. I put, uh, da, 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 da. shoot, it skipped way down. There we go. Um, the salad with feta is a great meal prep dish. Excellent. My husband will eat kale and broccoli and cauliflower when they're in those chopped salads, but not otherwise. Yeah. My husband's good about eating his vegetables, but select vegetables only. So if like, he won't eat broccoli because it gives him tummy problems, but I love broccoli. So I have to, but he, but he can do cauliflower. So Sometimes we have multiple. I don't even know. Um, but it's fine. Aren't green ones and browns more meaty? I put red lentils in ground beef dishes to stretch the meat and make more servings in shepherd pie and tacos. Okay. I made meatloaf with green lentils. Oh my gosh, you guys. This is amazing. Yay for being an obliger. Mm -hmm. It's true. I'm an obliger. I could eat lentils with rice or cauliflower all day with salt, pepper, and stir fry it with coconut aminos and a little shredded cheese. TJ's has pre-made lentils in the refrigerator section. I did not know this. I'm very excited to go to Trader Joe's. I've only been to Trader Joe's once since we've been down here, and it, I didn't even get to like fully appreciate every new and exciting thing that was in there. So I'm very excited to go to Trader Joe's as part of my restock and purchase all of the favorites and the new things as well. And so I will have to keep my eyes open for lentils because that's a really, that's a really good hot tip. Thank you for that. Soup is great. I don't even put pasta in, just car carrots, celery, and onions. We do sometimes put in a little rice. Okay. I remember making red lentils and didn't like them. Brown and green lentils are better. I've made shepherd's pie with lentils instead of ground meat. This is so interesting. I would be freaked out by trolls, by negative comments. You are so brave to put yourself out there. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not for everybody. I don't know who's decided that they hate me so much that it is worth their time 
to sit and watch these videos or even to hunt down when a new video is on to hit the thumbs down button. Like, I pity the person that has that much free time on their hands. Pity that person. Um, so more than anything, I feel sorry for them. I have the power to delete and block as I see fit and nobody can even see the dislike numbers anymore. I did that on purpose um, because I was just like, well, this is stupid because they're probably doing it to, you know, like their, their version of, I don't know, harassment, who knows? So I just turned off the ability to do that. They still count. So hit the thumbs up button if you would so desire to do so because it still helps me out. You just can't see the numbers because I'm like, well, this is stupid. I'm not gonna give them their, their two seconds in the sun um, just because they feel like being jerks, you know, they're, they're not worth it. Um, but knowing that it's really probably some sad person most of the time who has nothing better to do with their life really helps. <laughs> it, it helps you manage the trolls just fine. Uh, maybe one of our friends will find one of your old, my old YouTube channels. I tried starting a YouTube, a weight loss YouTube channel once, but didn't stick to it after the one video. I cook the red ones separately, then add the ground beef once it's cooked. Also thicken stoops and stew. This is fascinating to me. I'm going to have to look into the red lentil thing too, because that sounds really versatile. Huh. When my late husband passed from lung cancer, we were able, able to donate his corneas. That's wonderful. And as a corneal recipient, I thank you for doing that um, because it, it made, and like, I, I'm sorry for your loss, but knowing how frequently and how easy it is to donate your corneas, um, it, it made my surgery completely worry-free because for a lot of transplant surgeries, you have to find the right match and you have to get on a waiting list and all of these things. And there is just a plethora. I don't know if there's actually a plethora, but there are so many um, people who donate their corneas that because of that, I could schedule my surgery day and we knew on that day that we would have a cornea ready for me. And they did a great job of picking one that made sense for my body. They picked a younger cornea so it, the graft would last longer on my, my eye. There is always the possibility that I'll probably have to have one more corneal transplant in my life um, just because apparently the grafts don't necessarily go till the end of life. They last like 25 years or something. Um, although the doctor I saw most recently said she's optimistic that mine will probably last longer, which is amazing. But so long story short, thank you, because I am a recipient of one of those corneas. I do like the chickpea pasta. I'm late to the live. Sorry, I'm guessing you're talking about eligibility for the vaccine. If so, did, Min did Minnesota definitely ch change? Illinois changed. I know that Illinois changed because they just opened up to over 55 and that's how my dad got an appointment. Um, so that's awesome. Um, did Minnesota officially change? I don't know if they've changed something yet. I'm not going to worry about it until I get home, but you better believe that Monday morning I'm going to be um, getting all the 411, all the 411 to figure out how I'm eligible, if I'm eligible and try and get an appointment. So we'll see. Do you suppose they won't ask questions if I just wear my braces to my appointment? Like, it is the easiest, most simple thing. I wear them. There are days that I wear the braces just so I don't get dirty looks if I'm planning on using the handicap parking. Because I have I, I have not had this happen to me yet, but I guarantee you people see me pull in and go, why is that young girl parking in the handicap spot? But then I emerge with braces on and people keep their mouths shut. I've totally done that before. Just because I'm like, I don't want to have to deal with people on the off chance that I run into that grumpy person who decides to accuse me of something they know nothing about. I've done that. But you, you wonder if like, what if I just showed up in my braces? Like no questions asked, right? Clearly she has a disability of some kind. I don't know. <laughs> my main concern about YouTube videos is that there are only so many blind people in my community. I'm not concerned about the haters, but I do want to keep my privacy and safety. Yes, I understand that. Um, so there's only so many blind people. Well, okay. So what, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of friends finding you? Is that what you're afraid of? Or are you like, cause actually being a blind creator could work to your advantage if you actually wanted to grow a YouTube channel, because that's very niche. Like not too many people can say I'm a blind YouTube creator. 
Um, so that would actually work in your favor, which would be really cool. Um, but you only need to divulge what information you want to divulge. You don't have to tell people what state you live in, what country you live in. You don't have to tell people anything about you. Um, I have like, I don't, I don't divulge a lot of my husband's information on here. Um, and quite frankly, the only reason you guys know my last name is because I'm growing this into a business and I need to have my official name tied to everything. But, um, so that like you can keep certain, certain things private. There are creators that keep their entire relationship private. Um, so it's entirely up to you what and how much you want to share. Um, ah, the spice rack has not found my videos. Just go on your state vaccine qualifier. You can do it from Florida. Book your appointment ASAP. Yeah, I should mess around with that. Maybe when I need a break from editing tomorrow, because tomorrow's editing day. So I'm going to be at a computer literally all day tomorrow. Major TJ's Hall coming soon. You better believe it. TJ's Hall, Sam's Club Hall, Aldi Hall, Target Hall, at a Target with a reasonable inventory. All coming soon. Um, and probably all in one video. <laughs> It's going to be a long haul, but it's yeah, the long haul. I'm in it for the long haul. <laughs> uh, I cracked myself up, um, but it'll be good. I'm getting hungry, trying to keep my calories low this week. My sister and I are going to take advantage of my parents going away by going to Cheesecake Factory. I wonder if any of your friends in the Thumbs Down session are Spice Wrap members that have been kicked out of here. I wouldn't be at all surprised. I wouldn't be at all surprised if they are people that I have blocked. I just wouldn't because unfortunately you can't prevent people from watching your content. You can just prevent people from commenting on your content, which is fine. I don't need to know that you're watching. And if you decide to give me the view, good for you. The last, the last major hater that I dealt with was convinced. She was convinced. And if you're here, Hey, uh, what was your name? Mary Lynn? Hey. Um, but this woman was convinced that even though she commented on my video, she did not give me a view. And I'm like, you literally can't get to the comment section without clicking on the video. You need to give me the view to get to the comments. So, like, hysterical. So, if you all want to keep viewing my videos and giving me thumbs downs because they still count as engagement, which is good for me, go right ahead. Thank you. Uh, like, seriously, that's where I'm at with all this. Uh, da, 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 da. I see dislikes on so many live videos before they've even started. Crazy. Oh, yeah. I had four again today. I, and it happened literally like the minute before they started because I'm just, I want to know. I, I, I'm so curious to see when they do it. When I hopped on at seven minutes till, I had no likes, no dislikes. And then at one minute till, I had two likes and four dislikes. I was like, all right, what ups? What ups? I was wondering why I was the only one who clicked like. It was just the numbers don't show. Yes, it's just the numbers don't show. So nothing, you guys will see nothing. I can click like on my own video. I just clicked like. Nothing changed, I don't think, for anybody else. Only I can see what button I hit. And the same thing would happen if I hit dislike. Um, and I just did that because haters gonna hate. And so I'm just gonna manage what I can control. Like words that show up in comments. I eliminate specific words and all that. And it's my channel. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. That would actually be better for me. Thank you, haters. So, <laughs> um, da -da 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 -da. Illinois opening 16, 18 over in, and over in late April. That's amazing. That's awesome. Except my whole family's vaccinated already. My sister's a teacher. My other sister works in a hospital. My mom works in a hospital. My cousins are teachers. My grandparents are grandparents. Like, so everybody that I'm going to see is already vaccinated, which is awesome, except for the whole, you could still transmit it even though you're vaccinated thing, which means we still have to be careful. <laughs> I'm like, we're this close and yet so far. Um, New Hampshire is over, over 50 eligible as of yesterday. Okay, okay, we're getting there. I love it. I love this. I love it so much. I really do. I got in because I work in childcare, but I didn't have to prove anything. They didn't ask. Interesting. Good to know. The place I went wouldn't let you in if you didn't have appointment. Oh, I don't just mean like randomly walking in with my braces on and being like, help me, give me a vaccine. That's not what I mean. I mean like make an appointment and then validate the appointment by showing up in my braces. That's what I mean. <laughs> 
the idea of people I know finding me is really unappealing, mostly after fear of someone somehow tracking me down. Um, yeah, and like the the bigger you get, um, the the more cautious you can be. But the, like you can take specific precautions. Like for me, I have a PO box so people don't have to send things to my actual mailing address um, and things like that. Like it's possible. I live in the Twin Cities, but you don't actually know where in the Twin Cities. Like you can you can vague book it, so to speak, right? Oh, my fidget thing is now on the floor. Wah wah. Um, but there there are ways to do it. But if it gives you that much anxiety, then you don't have to do it. Only do it if you really feel called to do it and you truly want to do it. Like, you don't have to. There's no pressure. You can just leave your A Rosy Reality name to be a really cool name that shows up in comment sections and live streams of the people you watch. Like, that, and that's okay. You don't have to do anything with that. But if you wanted to do something with it, I think it's a really great name to do something with. I used a spice one that recently had seven spices, including rosemary and oregano. It reminded me of our friends. Well, I got to go. Long day today. Work from 6 a.m. for the over 60 shoppers. Not a single patient in my pharmacy till 745. And I get to be on the 7 a.m. Zoom in the morning for New Hampshire COVID shots starting soon at local pharmacies. Well, have a wonderful day. Lori, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you coming in. My friends. Oh, my goodness. All right. What else do you want to talk about? What else? What else? Give me something exciting. Give me something fun. <gasps> I have to go on the Harry Potter topic for just a hot second. Tomorrow is Oregano Lady Day. Tomorrow is the anniversary of Oregano Lady showing up. Why did $1.49 just show up? Who super chatted me? Who super chatted me? Lissa did. There it is. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, is that a spice in honor of Oregano Lady Day? Thank you. You're funny. I appreciate that you save those until it's relevant. I really do. I really do. Because they make me chuckle. Uh, so thank you. Um, Oregano Lady visited us a year ago tomorrow. Aww. And we have been calling the haters the spike rack, Spice Rack ever since. Shout out to you, Oregano Lady. Um, anyway, I have to get on the Harry Potter wagon for a second. Let me know. Fill me in. Who of you actually have read Harry Potter or seen the movies of Harry Potter and are actively engaged when I start talking about Harry Potter for a hot second? Because I want to make sure that there's a different... Did you, I did not see the Jen Sinjiro question. I thought you had a question for me. Shoot, where is it? Hang on. Question. I found your question, Rosie. Uh, when I watched Jen Sinjiro... I watched a Jen Sincero video interview and I loved it until she started talking about how she calls herself a witch and went to a psychic and send and sends light to her leg. Is that part of the book? I don't know. I just started the book. I'm literally on page like 27 or something. I'm two chapters in, so I don't know. But the joy of self-help books is you can take what works for you and leave what doesn't. And like ev everybody's different and this woman is a no nonsense type of woman and um but she's like she's special in her own right and she's had her own life experiences and does what she does uh, that works for her and she shares with us um so if that does come up that doesn't mean that the rest of the book is irrelevant because I'm all, I'm only two chapters in and I really like the book so far um, because I'm like, yeah, I even posted a thing of it, like when she was talking about triggers and cues and habits and everything. And one of the triggers was, she was like, your dog walks into the room, room, your desire to, I, oh, I can't remember all of the verbiage, but it was so cute. And I was like, oh, look, it's me. And she's literally using habits to, she's illustrating habits by talking about the, the love and affection that you can't help but give to your dog because it's habitual. I was like, it's me, it's me. Um, so she's got good stuff in there. So even if something like that comes up, even if there's something you don't agree with, that's fine. Um, James Smith, the the author of Next Month Book and the guy who I posted in my Instagram stories today. Like, first of all, ladies, if you haven't seen that, go see, go watch it because it's really great. But there are F-bombs in it. And um, so there's that. But like that guy, James Smith, I love him. I think he's brilliant. I know for a fact that he does not believe in God or any kind of religion, but he respects religion, but it's not for him. And just because I disagree with him on that doesn't mean that he doesn't have anything valuable to add to my life. 
I very much value the information that is relevant to what he can give me. And I let him be with the opinions of his that I disagree with. So you can gain something from everybody. Lord knows there are people here that don't agree with me, but hopefully I still have something valuable <laughs> to offer, you know? So yes, thank you, Rosie. I thought I saw your question and I got really confused when I didn't encounter your question. <laughs> Uh, yes, I've listened to audiobooks. Yep, yep, Harry Potter. You can hate read the book if you want. Um, I just bought the last book to own two complete collections, one for kids and one for me because I don't share hardcovers. Diana, I appreciate that. I love that. Um, hate read. I've read all the Harry Potter books, seen the movies quite a few times. Excellent. Uh, didn't it say something about acting like a moron? Her, the Jensen Chiro book? Probably. She speaks very bluntly. Um, and it's funny because all of her other books I've listened to on audiobook. I haven't actually read them, so I can hear her voice narrating the book for me, um, which I think makes it better, but it also helps me understand her personality better because I've heard her previous work re uh, read out loud in her intended inflection. Um, so that kind of helps. So like when stuff like that shows up, I'm not surprised because it sounds like her, you know? She writes the way she sounds. I love have the Harry Potter movies got to book four and stopped reading. Reading is not a habit of mine. Good feedback. I agree it would be helpful, but the alarm bells went off. For a um, if CMT is considered an autoimmune disease, you're eligible now. It is not considered an autoimmune. I do not have an autoimmune disease, um, which is great. It's a blessing that I don't have an autoimmune disease, but it's not. It is a nerve disease. It is a disease of the peripheral nerves. Um, so if I can get, mus I, I can, I can sneak into the muscular dystrophy um, thing, but I can't sneak in on autoimmune, not without being um, immoral. I'm like, I'm going to follow the rules. And if I have to wait until it's open to the general public, I will. Um, but if I can sneak in there on a technicality, great. In regards to reacting like a, in regards to reacting to a dog walking in the room, maybe she did. I can't remember. Um, anyway, Harry Potter. Y'all, I finally finished Order of the Phoenix over the weekend. What's the, what is, what is the popular phrase? I'm shook. I'm shook. Uh, now, to be clear, this is not my first time having read the books. I read the books when they came out, right? And if you're going to watch my vlog that I'm uploading on Thursday, I'm going to, you're going to hear all this again. But I watched them. I was the generation that had to wait for every book to come out. They started coming out when I was in junior high school and I had to wait for the release of every book and every movie. So I've read them all once. And I remember getting through Order of the Phoenix relatively quickly for as large as it is um, because I couldn't put it down. And for some reason, but for some reason, Prisoner of Azkaban was my favorite book. This might be my new favorite book. The whole fight scene and the whole thing in Dumbledore's office after the epic fight scene. I'm going to have to go back and rewatch the end of the movie, but I am 98% sure that the movie does not do the fight scene or the amazing word vomit amount of information that Dumbledore gives us that clarifies so much it doesn't happen in the movie. It doesn't happen to the level that it happens in the book. And I literally was sitting there with my jaw falling open on the floor because I could not believe how much stuff was not in the movie that would have made the movie a million times better million times better and because I've seen the movie so many times and like I know the actors and whatever so of course when I'm reading Harry Potter now the actors are what's playing in my head right it will be forever be Harry Potter played by Daniel Radcliffe you know Hermione Granger will for always be uh Emma Watson so I'm watching watching this epic fight scene with all the different rooms that they didn't even touch play out in my head and I'm sitting there, I'm going, this whole scene could have been so much cooler. Could have been so much cooler. And then we get to Dumbledore's office. Like, y'all, I was 
floored. Uh, this, these last couple of chapters could have easily added an hour to the movie and I wouldn't have cared one bit if they put all of this information in there. Mind boggling details that they've left out of all the movies. Little, little nuggets of information that you don't even find out unless you read the books. Mm. If you are a fan of Harry Potter and like Lindsay just said, I need to finish order. Yeah, you do. And then you need to text me once you do, please. I started complaining about this. I texted my sister and I'm like, where are you in the Harry Potter series? Because she's seen the movies but never read them. She's like, I'm only, I finished book number two. I'm like, God, you're no help to me right now. And so I texted my sister-in-law, Kristen, who also started reading the Harry Potter series. She has seen the movies but has not read the books. But she got interested in reading the books and she's in the middle of Order of the Phoenix. And um, she stopped reading Order of the Phoenix because she didn't want to reach the death of the character that's in that book. And I'm not, I'm not going to spoil it. Let me know if I can spoil it because you all know what happens in the general sense. Um, but so she just stopped reading. So I texted her. I was like, you need to pick up this book and finish it so I have someone to talk to. Please. And so I didn't think she would, but literally the next day I'm getting text message after text message of a te after text message of her like basically live tweeting me what she's reading in the book. And then I woke up, she's two hours um, ahead of behind me because she's in Utah. <laughs> Literally woke up the next day to like 20 something text messages, most of which were in all caps as she finished the book and talks about the scene in Dumbledore's office. And it's just, and I'm like, I know, right? Like, I'm so glad that it's not just me freaking out over how freaking awesome it was. And Lindsay, I agree, it was dragging for so long, which is why it took me forever to finish it. And finally, I was like, I knew I finished my In the Flow book, the cycle syncing book, and I had three books that I wanted to read in the month of March. And I was like, you know what? I am not even gonna start my book club book until I finish the stupid Harry Potter book. And so I did. And my husband went flying with his uh, father um, and, and a couple of their friends. They did some cool formation flying or whatever on Saturday morning. My mother-in-law slept in. My husband and my father-in-law were up early and out and gone for a handful of hours. So I woke up and I was like, you know what? Now is the time. I'm going to sit and I am going to read the rest of my Harry Potter book. And I sat there for like an hour and a half and finished the book and I'm feeling all the feels and can't talk to anybody about them and am furious with the movie creators, but also I really think the movies were well done and they just, the books are always better. The books are always better, but my gosh, you guys, if any of you now read Order of the Phoenix because of me, feel free to DM me and give me all of your thoughts because I felt all the feels and was like all the little realizations, I'm like, so good it's so good oh my gosh um now I've got to reread it yeah you do yeah you do Harry Potter books so much better than the movies yes Harry Potter is so popular in NYC you could join a Harry Potter themed scavenger hunt in the Museum of Natural History it was a blo oh, that sounds so cool you guys ever tell you about when I went to um Harry Potter world I went to Harry Potter world and it was the bomb.com and I literally I I felt I felt I literally like the joy that a kid feels going to Disneyland I felt that I felt that it so much like I was a kid in a candy store I was a child seeing their favorite Disney characters come to life except I was in Harry Potter land my my in-laws took me when we we came down I don't remember when, but we were down for a little while. I don't remember if it was for a vacation, but they wanted to do something to be like, you guys are leaving. Let's go do something really fun. So we spent, we took a weekend. We went to Orlando and we did Universal Studios one day and the other one, Islands of Adventure the next day. And cause all I wanted to do was go to Harry Potter land. Like that was bucket list item. And of course, at that point I hadn't made my husband, maybe I had made him watch the Harry Potter movies, but not like this time around. Like he knows his stuff this time around. Um, last time around he didn't, he watched them out of obligation to me. And can I read the order without finishing Goblet? You could, um, as long as you've seen the movies, you could, um, but the books are just so much better than the movies um, that I would, I mean, take your time and whatever, but mm, mm, so good. But I live, so my, and my in-laws, 
have done nothing Harry Potter. They know nothing about Harry Potter except that he's a person. That's all they know. And they took me to Harry Potter world. And oh my gosh, Diagon Alley is everything, is everything. And it's wonderful. And they have a Nocturne Alley. And it was just, if you are a Harry Potter fan, you need to put it on your bucket list that post COVID, you need to go to Harry Potter world because you will live your dream. I want to go back because now my husband has an appreciation for it. So I want to take him so he can see, so I can see him appreciate it more this time around because the joy for all three of them was to see me being obnoxiously happy and excited. Um, but they didn't get to appreciate it, you know, you know, um, oh my gosh, it was so good. You guys uh, spill the beans, uh, which flow book would you recommend? Um, they're both great. The Woman Code gives a really good scientific explanation for a lot of things, but is focused on fixing your hormones. Whereas In the Flow is focused on if you can, it gives you the rundown on how to fix your hormones, but it's also giving you the flow protocol for cycle syncing in the future, if that makes sense. So Woman Code is the, hey, I think something's up. Let me learn about what's happening and figure out how to fix it. And then if you liked what you heard about cycle syncing and whatnot, the little bits that you got in woman code, you go to in the flow and it's literally the how to manual for cycle syncing. So depending on what you're looking for, I recommend both of them. I love them. I think they're both very informative and awesome. Um, but depending on what you want, if you want to fix a problem, go to woman code. If you want to learn how to cycle sync, go to in the flow. Uh, I couldn't finish it, but this is when audiobooks still cost a fortune. I was reading a print book with 10 times magnifier. That was Harry whining is me giving up. I read the audiobook years later. Spill the beans. I can't remember what I'm spilling the beans on. Who died? Is that what I'm spilling the beans on? It's my first time actually reading the series, not just listening to the audiobooks. Yes, the end is epic. The middle that drags. Yeah, the middle drags. And it's true. And that's I'm, so, I'm I didn't think about it at the time. But that's probably what took me so long. It's probably what took me so long to finish it because I was never motivated to pick it up. And then when I finally was like, I've only got this much of the book left, finish it. I had it done in 90 minutes because I was enthralled. I was utterly enthralled. Oh my gosh. Um, Harry Potter World's on my bucket list, as it should be. As it should be. I got into Harry Potter late. I was 25 when I first read the books and saw the movies and the first book came out three days before I turned six. Yeah, I don't even know how I ended up into it. I don't know if like a friend of mine was reading it or whatever, but I ended up right on track with the book releases and the movie releases. And it was a really fun thing for me because I didn't like to read all that much. But this, mm, so good. So good. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, dear. All right. What else have we got to chat about, my friends? That is, that was the tangent that I needed to take because, mm. so I hope I've encouraged at least one of you to go read Order of the Phoenix and power through to the last little bit of the book because it's worth it. It's worth it. And also, it's kind of dark. Like, it's kind of dark. Um, more dark than the movie. And it just, like, I know that that's the, that is the movie that switched and you could tell that it got darker, which makes sense because of the Dark Lord and everything. But, like, there's some pretty deep stuff that happens in there. I wasn't allowed to read them as a kid. Neither was, neither was my husband. Um, so, no, and neither was Kristen, obviously. And that's why they know nothing about them because they didn't let them read them as a child. So, it, it took my influence to get two thirds of them. I don't know if my brother-in-law has ever touched them, but he has three children to deal with. So I'm not even going to tell him to go do it. Um, but I, I got my sister-in-law and I got my husband. My husband will never read the books. He'll never read the books. Um, but he's watched the movies and he knows, he understands. He understands. So like I can ask him, okay. I like, there was one of the, you actually got like a test question for one of their, um, basically their standardized testing stuff or their SATs. Um, they're called the owls and one of the test questions was printed in the book so I asked him the test question and he knew the answer and I was very pleased with that um I love sassy Harry and order might be one of the reasons McGonagall is one of my favorite characters in the book oh my gosh McGonagall they're just oh 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 and also my most hated character is also the highlight of that book so it's just a book man Whew. 
I let the kids watch up until the end of Goblet and I turn it off before the port key. That makes sense because it gets, that is the turning point of the entire series. And so what, you're going to, you're going to let the boys watch when they're a little bit older, finish out the, <laughs> finish out the series when they're older, um, which makes perfect sense for small kids because it can be scary. That, like, they did the movies well enough where they're, they're dark when you get to the end of them. Um, but man, it's just so good. It's just so good. Holy moly. Um, yes. Making sure I see everything. Lindsay Night at the Museum was filmed in the Museum of Natural History. I loved the Night in the Museum movies. I loved them. They're just so fun. They're so fun. Maybe after Jack can read at this level, then he'll be old enough. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, you should be like, you want to see how they end? Read the books. Um, yeah. Then we'll go to Harry Potter World. Yes. Yes. Oh, Harry Potter World. I swear, if it wasn't for COVID, we would have gone there again like this time around this Florida visit and we would have gone to Disney and all that we have friends I have a friend who works for Disney who I was texting with yesterday and I'm like I'm so bummed we didn't even get to see them like they were our best friends when we lived in North Carolina and she works for Disney now so whenever we come down we go see them and they take us to Disney World and it's so fun I have been to Disney World more than adult as an adult than I've ever been as a child um like it's a decently regularly occurring thing that happens um except for COVID times but helps when you know people anyway what else you got I have friends that require their nine-year-old to read the book before he can watch the movie I swear I would probably be the same maybe I don't know my sister is getting the the illustrated versions of the books which apparently are still the full book I have to look at them next when I'm up there um, because she's got like the cool, the really cool version of the book, but I'm hoping that she makes Alice read them at some point or encourages, but like, of course, Alice is only four. So she's a ways away from that. Wait, who is my hated character? Um, does anybody have a guess as to who the character that I hate most in the entire series is? I'm open. I'm open. Um, and I'm sure some of you have figured it out by me saying that the person's in this book, the highlight of this book. Um, but does anyone have any guesses? Who is the character that makes me ragey, angry, and hateful? I'm not a hateful human being, and I am hateful. There are very few characters that I wish ill on. The list of those characters are as follows. Joffrey Baratheon of Game of Thrones. Ding, 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 ding. Marie and Rosie have got it. Umbridge is the worst person in the world. She's awful. She's horrible. She makes me cringe when I see her. Oh, and Lindsay, you are saying all very, very good ones. Those are people I also don't like. But Dolores Umbridge is the character I hate the most in the entire book. Not the Dark Lord, Professor Umbridge. The little goofy, stumpy woman in pink. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, she makes me ragey. Um, so my list of characters that I wish ill on, Joffrey Baratheon. Also, the other guy in Game of Thrones that is a really horrible human being and calls the one guy Reek. I can't remember his name. I've probably repressed that information for my life. Dolores Umbridge, um, the one female bad guy in the TV show Blind Spot. She's awful. And she gave me kind of Umbridge vibes with like being the worst woman in the world and shoot I had one more who was it who was it oh the person who uh, the pastor's wife in the tv show to uh true blood those are the people that like that's my short list of characters that I would wish ill on and some of them had it delivered which was very gratifying for me um but mm. I get really emotionally invested in my characters. Oh, Susan, I had a question for you. What is, because I think it was you. A long time ago, you told me about a TV show that was focused on a child-free couple. What is that TV show? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was you, and I can't for the life of me remember it. 
I don't, I don't think I remember it, but I have a hunch, but I could be wrong. And so I wanted to confirm with you before I got my hopes up about this TV show that I just started watching. Um, Ramsey Bolton. Yes. He was not quite as, he didn't make me quite as angry as, um, mad about you. Okay. It's the other one. I just started watching Dharma and Greg and so far they're child free, but they, um, they talk about kids and I'm like, I don't know if this is the show she suggested mad about you. I have to write that down on my little piece of paper that's sitting here. And that's what I thought. I, cause I, and Helen Hunt, thank you for saying that because I pictured a different photograph and I was like, the, there's a blonde chick in it. Maybe that's the show, the one with the blonde chick. But then, of course, I couldn't remember her name. Mad about you. I knew you wouldn't let me down, Susan. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Thank you. Um, yeah. Oh, Ramsey Bolton. He's awful. There. Ooh. Ooh, that list that, that I just said just gives me the heebie-jeebies. Uh, you take umbrage with umbrage. <laughs> She's the worst. She was the worst with the face of a toad. I think you didn't see my comment. Check out Deborah Harkness, the All Souls trilogy. If you love Harry Potter, you will love this. Um, you want to know what's funny? Look what's written at the top of this piece of paper that's sitting next to my live stream. All Souls, the All Souls trilogy by Deborah at the, the, um, the author's name is helpful. Harkness. Awesome. Awesome. Why does Umbridge have to be a cat lady? She's an epic cat lady, too. Um, we were just talking about rewatching that. Wait, what were you talking about rewatching? Dharma and Greg? I have, this is not a rewatch for me. I just, I happened to see it on Hulu as one of the new offerings or something. It popped up and I was like, this seems like a show that would be good for me to watch by myself because I need a show to watch when Eric's working late or whatever, especially once we get back home. And it's filling the void. It is Game of Thrones. Okay, yeah. That's intense. It's an intense oh, Game of Thrones. We've watched Vikings scratches the Game of Thrones itch. Uh, that's a good one as well. Um, did you ever notice that nobody, almost nobody says their favorite Harry Potter character is Harry Potter? That is true. A lot of people don't. Although I'm not going to lie. I kind of like Harry Potter, but like, I, I like Harry Potter, but also because I found once he got older, Daniel Radcliffe to be very attractive because I am attracted to men in nerdy glasses. I love glasses on men. Um, so he just, Daniel Radcliffe as a grown man is the right vibe for me. Uh, so I like, I like him, but like, he also just the darkness and that like, I didn't read, like, as I was reading order, I was like, this is one troubled boy. Whoa. Like, <laughs> oof. Um, but yeah, yeah, no, I'm a big fan of Dumbledore. I'm a big fan of Dumbledore. I, but also the stuff that Dumbledore said in this book made me question, like, I just question everything that I know in, in this book. Mm. Um, that one is a great one. Best phrase. No, he most right I've ever, not he, not the most right I've ever been. Do, 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 do. True. When you ask people, who's your favorite Harry Potter character? Nobody says their favorite is Harry Potter. All right, friends. Who is your favorite Harry Potter character? Who? I love Hermione. She's so sassy. That's true. She really is sassy. I And I like Hermione because I would probably be Hermione. Like, I have a Hermione vibe. I do. And I was a little bit of a know-it-all, a little bit of a nerd. But, yeah. Mine's going to be McGonagall. McGonagall's also a good one. She's a great character. And I was going to say Luna is also great. Um, Luna's not my favorite, but I chuckle whenever she's there. Like, I just, the actress that portrayed her did a stellar job. A stellar job. Um, mine is Dumbledore, and I think that's why this book is so hard to get through. That's a good point, Lindsay. Because the stuff, and then, like, get to the end and let me know. Like, I still love Dumbledore, but it makes me, like, it makes me go, everybody makes mistakes. Like, <laughs> It's intense. The whole thing is so intense. Oh, we managed to get on a Harry Potter tangent, y'all, but I'm not mad. I'm not mad because Harry Potter is life. It really is. I love it. Um, and also, I don't think anybody else here can can go off on a tangent with my other obsession, which has been six. So <laughs> six, the musical. Um, I know he'll be back. 
I think I've said this before, but you want a light and heartwarming series. I said Deborah Geary's Witch. Witch Central series. Brave yourself another for another day. Deborah Geary is also written on this piece of paper. And so is math. I'm assuming it's 18 minus 4 is 14. I'm not sure why that's written there because I didn't write that. Um, I love how she made Luna more like Ivana Lynch. Plus the backstories to Ivana getting into the movie were great. Yeah, I. it was good. It's it's all good. Harry Potter is wonderful. Um, if y'all have a different topic you would like to talk about, let me know. Because I got nothing else to say today. That's I've just been trucking along doing things. I am excited for, um, a meal plan thing that I signed up for that I'm going to start like, mm, I don't want to say meticulously, but, um, like going through and like actually planning meals with a shopping list specific for the meal plan. And it's going to be great. I am really looking forward to like the whole restock of the everything. Um, I love that we're, everyone's still talking about Harry Potter. I'm a big fan. <laughs> um, but I'm opening the floor for other topics of discussion. I disliked how Ron got dumbed down. Started as a chess expert and got dumbed down, at least in the movies. No, that's true. That's true. Um, by the way, there's a whole, like, Ron playing Quidditch thing that I don't think is in the movie at all. Like, there, that was a big plot line. Big plot line. Um, Hermione too. Even, I'm Hermione too. Even at 67 years old, I'm still still sassy. Uh, once you get to the end, it's harder to like Dumbledore if you like Harry. That is true. That is true. Yes. Um, so as you can see, I can't decide on like one person, but the the um, what is, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, right? Like I can't decide. Who, like, because there are things I love about most of them. There are things I hate about a lot of them or dislike about a lot of them. But the series as a whole is perfection. Um, Ivana and I share the same dream to be a cat. It's going to be so great to get into a routine. Yeah, it is. It sure is. They gave Hermione all of Ron's good lines in the movies. Have you decided what changes you're making for travel? That is a great question. I actually am in talks and because Instagram lets you do things like look at DMs on um, desktop now. Let me see if she answered me. Basically, okay. I'm talking, refeed is maintenance for a couple of days. Calculate your BMR and then use, okay. Um, I was talking to Mindy. You know who Mindy, the power of doing Mindy Lewis and she, she just posted an amazing picture. You should go look. If you're not using your phone right now, you should go check out her latest post, which is her boasting, wait for it, a 25 pound gain from her lightest weight. Look at the pictures. Look at the pictures because I don't know where that 25 pound gain is. It's in muscles. She's got a slightly more shapely boute and her, you can tell her pecs have grown. Uh, she is still nice and thin and trim and the same size as her goal weight, which was 25 pounds ago. And she talks about how her body was feeling at her lightest weight and how her body feels now. All these things. All that to say, if I ever hired a coach, like I'm considering getting coaching with Mindy because Mindy is somebody that I feel like I could be very, like I would really feel accountable to. Um, but she, so I shared her thing and we started talking on the thing. She's like, how's your cut going? Whatever. And, um, she was talking to me about, have you, have you done a refeed yet? Cause I told her, I was like, it, it's, you know, I'm technically down, but it is so painfully slow and fluctuating. So what did I send her? As of right now, it's seven, seven weeks of weigh-ins and I'm down two point, um, 2.9. So I'm three pounds in seven weeks, which is less than half a pound a week. It's painfully slow and the fluctuations are also painful. And so she's like, well, have you done a refeed? And I'm like, well, um, I've been hanging out at 1600 to 1700 calories. What's a refeed? And so she just answered me while I've been talking. Basically a refeed is aid eating at maintenance for a couple of days. Calculate your BMR and then use your activity multiplier to get your current maintenance calories. Let me know if you need any help. Oh, she's wonderful. Um, so I might, so base, so Mindy is suggesting bumping up to, um, 
maintenance for a couple of days. I was thinking that my plan would actually be to bump up like my current range right now is 1600 to 1700. I was thinking about bumping up to like 1800 to 1900 for the um the week, right? And um I could another like another option would be like if I'm really mindful about what I eat in the car, I could do that for a couple days or do cal like bump up like she said. I don't know. Um Mindy Mindy Lewis. She used to be the power of doing WW. So so start like she's the power power of doing. Let me see if I can get to her account. Here. Here you here y'all. Um, although if you click on it and you're on your phone, you're gonna end up leaving the app. But this is her Facebook, the, her Instagram account. She is one of the people that I idolize the most. She is somebody who lost weight on Weight Watchers, killed it worked for Weight Watchers for a couple of years and has decided that Weight Watchers is no longer the way of life for her. She's lifting, she reverse dieted, she's counting macros, she's maintaining her weight her at her higher weight and she's building muscle and focused on nutrition and health. And, um, and I have mad respect for her. I don't know what it is about her, but I have mad respect for her. And so she is one of the accounts that I personally turn to for the inspiration that I hope is akin to what you guys look to me for uh, because we all need to be inspired too. us influencers need to have people that we are inspired by and she is one of the people that inspires me the most so it's I really appreciate that she and I are on talking terms and our Instagram friends it's really great so that's the link to her I really am a big fan um so that's Mindy so for travel I don't I, we're gonna see um we'll we will be doing like we have we'll have healthy snacks in the car so there's that we know that we will be stopping in a place that has a restaurant we like that has reasonably healthy choices which is really great but it also has a cookie place that has been recently placed on my radar and I've been devastated to discover that even though I live near the Twin Cities there isn't one close to me but there is one way up north where my CMT clinic is and there is not one that's active by my parents' house yet. And there's not one down here. So I'm like, oh, this sucks. I'm never going to be able to go to this place. Turns out there's one right by where our hotel is. And I'm very excited. So we have healthy options, but also I want to go to the Epic Cookie Store. And I looked at my husband and I'm like, we will be stopping at this place. You can't stop me. And he's like, that's fine. We'll go get you your cookies. Um, and I'm very excited about it. So it's going to be, it's going to be a, a trip of balance, you know? Um, but it's going to be, it's going to be good. And then um, my sister is already planning on cooking as a healthy dinner on one night. And then Marilyn, my grandpa's girlfriend, my grandma, for lack of a better term, um, is cooking for us the night we get there but then we'll also probably order a Chicago pizza or something that we can only get in Chicago so I don't know I don't know but I'm gonna up my calories for sure even if it's only two or three hundred I'm gonna consider doing the um I'm gonna pick Mindy's brain on um the comparison of where I landed for my maintenance calories and where she thinks I might land that would be an interesting conversation to have but so that's the plan with that Thank you for the question. Um, didn't make sense that Hermione was the one who explained mud blood to Harry in the movies. In the books, she didn't even know what that was. She just knew that it was bad based on everyone's reactions. That's true. That's true. I saw that earlier. She looks great. Uh, I just started following her great content. Yeah, she's got amazing content. I saw that post and it's definitely timely for me with my cut ending in a couple of weeks. Um, did anyone watch the movie A Wrinkle in Time with Reese Witherspoon, Oprah, and Mindy Kaling? I loved it. I saw it in the movies with 3D glasses, but totally worth watching on demand. I have not, but I want to because I remember reading that book. I think we've talked about this book before. I remember reading this book in like, it was like part of the gifted program that I was in in elementary school. So in like fifth grade, we read, a, a, I remember reading A Wrinkle in Time and I remember really enjoying it. And, um, they made, you know, they made this movie decades after I read the book. Um, but I remember going, oh, I should reread that book and then go watch that movie because I remember liking it as a child. So, and I did the same thing with The Giver. I never reread The Giver, but I saw the movie because I remember reading the book in school and really enjoying it. I kind of regret not joining one of her virtual shops. 
when I had the chance. I love her stuff. Mm -hmm. Smart man. Do not deny Brie of her cookies. Oh, no. Do not deny me my cookies. Um, I'm anxiously waiting for you to try the Starbucks Ice Brown Oat Milk Shake and Espresso. Only 100 calories. Um, oh, that's my plan. My plan is because we will end up taking, we will end up going to Starbucks the mornings that we travel. And my plan is to order one of those and you're on Instagram. I need to look up what your screen name is. I will tag you in the stinking photo of me trying this thing. Um, I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it all because of you. Uh, but what's interesting is Susan, there are so many people that talk about it. Heidi Powell, um, who's dating Dave Hollis, right? She was raving about it the other day, how it's her new favorite thing. And I was like, I never even heard of this until Susan told me about it. And now it's everywhere. It's literally everywhere. I'm not optimistic because I looked on the Starbucks app just for fun, and but it was later in the day and the local Starbucks here was sold out. So I'm going to try and get it. I don't know if I'll be able to get my hands on it, but I'm going to try. Um, she looks thinner to me. Yeah, and I thought that too at, at first, but then I looked at her. So like her waist looks trimmer and stronger. Um, yeah, Dave is dating Heidi Powell. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. They announced it a couple weeks ago. Um, you must not have been on the chat. I wanted to bring up Heidi and Dave, loving them as a couple. Yeah, me too. I think I think they're really, really cute. I'm a fan. Um, and I think it's cute that Heidi, that Heidi's ex-husband, Chris Powell, the fitness influencer, enthusiast, celebrity, whatever you want to call him, actually came down to Texas to meet Dave to see the man his kids are hanging out with and hung out with Heidi and Dave. How cool is that? Real cool. I'm really loving the dynamic. Um, but yeah, super fun. He interviewed her for a podcast, for his podcast, and they hit it off, and now they're dating. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so, so then I started following her because Dave was dating her, and um, and I remember her. I've, I've heard of her. I knew who she was, so I was like, oh, let me follow you for a while and see if you've got anything exciting to offer me, and she was talking about it. Um, she and oh the commenting on she looks thinner yes I don't disagree if you look I I really went to um I, I took a close look and I'm like what looks different or did she really stay the same and I noticed her chest not her boobs but her chest which I only realized this because of myself I can tell that my chest looks different um because of weightlifting her chest is a little bit bigger and her booty is a little bit bigger which is great great places to gain great places but she does not look like there's 25 pounds more on her body and i i love that she shares this i love it so much um i got the book as a present for my fifth grade graduation but i never read it a wrinkle in time book was great but this movie was shot in new zealand visually stunning and the costumes and makeup were phenomenal i i need to put that on my list i do uh, I wanted to, da, 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 da. okay, my respect for them just went off. I want to see this. Chris came to Texas. I was literally crying. I was so happy. I followed both of them. Rachel unfollowed Dave. She did? Are you serious? This I did not know. That's like, I know it, like, it shouldn't mean anything, but like, you unfollowed your ex-husband. Why? Because he's thriving? Like, he's doing so well. And I have mad respect for him. And, like, he, you know, took his time and did things right and only did things when things felt right. And I don't know. I've, every once in a while, I have un since unfollowed Rachel, but I check in on her every once in a while. Um, and, like, today she was actually sharing some reasonably inspiring content um, nothing profound or anything, but like a, a nice reminder, uh, or maybe it was yesterday. I can't remember, but like so much of her stuff is just not fun anymore and not inspiring to me anymore. And that like disrespect that, that, that earned her some lower, lowered respect from me. Um, because really really oh my gosh I didn't know that how did you find that out was that like 
made public knowledge or something? Or did you just happen to look and see if she was still following him? Because I didn't even think to do that because nowhere in my mind did it occur to me that she would ever unfollow him. Like, it's social media. So what? I'm Facebook friends with my ex-boyfriend. It's fine. We occasionally run into each other in um, theatrical situations when we lived in Chicago. Like, we ended up in the same room. I've introduced my husband to my ex-boyfriend. Like, it's not a big deal as long as you're a grown-up. But, like, when you have that many followers on social media and then when that person helped make you what you are, wow, wow. Um, I wonder how her book did. I have no idea how her book did. I have no idea. Aren't they still business partners? No. He, so he left the Hollis company and he said, not that I can't remember when, but he likes to answer questions when he's out running. And someone asked about, um, have you separated completely from the Hollis company? And the answer was yes, he has separated completely. So he is off doing his own thing now. Um, that is not in any way tied to Rachel which has got to be so hard. He literally moved to Texas for her. And then all of this went down. I don't, I don't even know. I haven't thought about that relationship in a while. I just know that I follow Dave and I really like watching Dave and oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, y'all. I know she's working on writing a book and I it's supposed to be the health book. I'm assuming the book that was supposed to come out next and said she cranked out this other one. He is also writing a new book. Dave is so good with Noah. I love his relationship with his kids. Yes, it made it made public knowledge. I did not. I did not know that. I did not know that. Oh, I do too. But what's really funny, um, Dave removed father of four. Interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah. So, oh shoot, what was I saying? Um, I thought about... Uh, the first time I thought about Hollis merch in quite some time was just today. And if you're a member of the Diva and the Divine Community website, um, you saw it. I was thinking about the Start Today journals. And I love the Start Today journals. And I have a blank one sitting at home waiting for me to return from this trip. And I'm going to start using it again. But I was like, man, when I'm done, I'm going to have to go out and freaking buy a Rachel Hollis Start Today journal because I like the Start Today <laughs> journals. So crazy, isn't it? So crazy, man. But I haven't thought about it just in this in depth. Maybe because he's spending time with her kids. It's entirely possible. I don't know. If he ends up with her, doesn't she have... Oh, okay. With Miss Rachel Hollis. Interesting. Interesting. Because, oh my gosh. That is so crazy. Mr. Dave Hollis. Now I'm, now I'm stalking. Dad of four rad kids. New York Times bestselling author, coach, podcast host, speaker, runner, and ally. Let's go. Invitation to be your coach. So apparently he's working with growthday.com now. Let's see. Growth Day. Go beyond online courses. So there are some killer faces on this. There's Jenna Kutcher. There's Mel Robbins, who is the author of The Five Second Rule. Um... The founder, whose name I can't remember, but the founder of It Cosmetics is on here. I think that's Brendan Burchard. Um, so there's solid things, and apparently you can get courses from these people. Um, so that's cool. I'm glad he found something else to work in. That's great for him. But, yeah, I'm sure there are other options if you don't want to support their brand. Oh, I know. I could just write it in a notebook. My problem is I like pretty things, and the notebooks are so pretty. They're beautiful. We'll see if they come out with another round at Target. Um, because the, I won't order from the Hollis Company website, but they're, if they're conveniently at Target, I might grab one. Um, because I believe in what the book stands for, even though she's lost her mind. Makes me sad. It makes me sad. Like, seeing her face kind of makes me angry now. And I want to know how many people feel that way. I, I, would, I wish I knew what, like, what her backlash was from this entire situation. Did she lose people? Did she gain them? Did she gain people? How did she net out? You know? Now I'm going to her Instagram account. 1.7 million followers. So apparently she's still doing just fine. Just fine. No big deal. You know, it is what it is. It's fine. It's not... 
whatever. Whatever. Anyway, um, why are spam callers bothering me at 9.27 p.m.? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, my phone does not ring for numbers that are not in my phone. Never got into her, bought a couple of her books, never read them. Don't get me wrong. Her first two books are solid. Girl, Wash Your Face was a solid book. Knowing now what I know about her, though, like, the problem was I liked her and Dave together. And I liked their relationship. And I liked what I thought it meant for a Christian relationship and how fun and spontaneous and sexy a Christian marriage could be. That all came crashing down. And then, of course, instead of... I love that in that blindsided divorce that Dave got hit with, he ran to the Lord and grew in faith. And I have mad respect for that work that he did. Mad respect. And I don't, I think she might have fallen the other way, which makes me sad. That is just is what it is. Heidi's been married twice. Two kids from each marriage, and both of the fathers and Heidi and kids spend birthdays and holidays together. I did see that Chris Powell just had a birthday, and Heidi was there and celebrating him and praising him. And I was like, my gosh, this is incredible. Amazing. How many um, families would not be broken if people who got divorced, I personally do not believe in divorce except for extreme circumstances that involve like abuse and mistreatment. Um, but like, for if people that got divorced didn't hate one another, but learned how to live and cooperate with each other, how many broken homes would be unbroken? And that's amazing. So I'm glad that she is there and sharing her life with the world. I appreciate that so much. I need to dive into who she is a little bit more, but I've got some, I've got some pretty solid respect for that whole situation. It's weird because normally I don't care when people in the media get divorced, but constant, constantly rub me the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. And normally I'm never surprised. This shocked me. And it was because they were preaching this amazing Christian marriage with all the sex and all the fun things and all the amazing things. And yes, the hard stuff too. But like, don't preach that if that's not actually what you're feeling, girl. And I, I, I believe I could be wrong. I could be misled in this. I believe that he was truly feeling that. He posted a really cute anniversary post and all that, and she did not reciprocate. So I, from what I see, I don't know them, but from what I've seen, I feel like he was still all in and she blindsided him. And that sucks. That sucks. But so if you're going to post just a couple weeks earlier in your podcast how awesome, how you're grateful for sleeping with your husband that week, and then you divorce him. What? What? Anyway. Um, can't block unknown callers dealing with unemployment crap. Oh, yeah. That's true. Um, so, yeah. All right. On that note, on that really random Hollis tangent, I'm going to let y'all go. Thank you all for hanging out with me today. I have not forgotten. I'm pointing my pencil at you, my pen at you. No live stream next week. There will be no live stream. Um, you can keep up with me on Instagram stories. That's where I'll be hanging out. Um, but I will not be live streaming next week. And I will probably be on social media a little bit less because I will be hanging out with my family and or entertaining my husband in the car <laughs> while he drives for 18 hours or 19 hours or something. So yes, that's it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me tonight. I do appreciate it. Our numbers are small, but they are mighty. Um, yeah. I will talk to you all later. Have a wonderful night.